Hello guys and welcome back. Today we're returning to Railroot for the 1.0 release. Now Railroot is what happens when a tycoon game meets a railway signal simulator, except with a much more friendly UI. And we're going to be setting up and running routes to make a lot of money and hopefully avoid any collisions. Now I would also like to say a huge thank you does go to Railroot for sponsoring this video. And if you're interested in getting this game yourself, then make sure to check it out whilst there's 25% off upon release. The link can be found in the description and the comment below. Let's jump into it. Railroot has three game modes. There's Rush Hour, Endless, and Timetable, and you can play across over 2,000 maps thanks to the Steam Workshop's community maps. But for this, I'm going to be playing Endless, and we're going to pick one of these. Ooh, let's go with Southeast London. Now, we're not going to use any of the game configurations. We're going to work our way all the way through, and we will get started with this. So these are our two platforms that are currently available. We're about to bring one of the trains in to platform one and then send them to Dartford and then back to Stone Crossing. Obviously, this is just the basics of the game. And as we get further into it, we can accept contracts for more trains and we can expand the amount of platforms that are in use and also the different stations as well. So for this one, we have, let's just pause it, a train going to Dartford and currently it's set to platform four. That's the only one we have available. And so it's going to pick up the passengers for the next 33 seconds. And then afterwards we can click this and it will allow the train to run to the next station. And then from here, we can right click to have it turn around once it's stopped. And we can change the junction here so that the train will head back to Stone Crossing. By sending the train back and forth and it not being delayed, we get money, but we also get green and red experience points based on the contracts that we're fulfilling. And these can be used towards upgrades such as auto accepting trains, automatic routing, uh, extra st stations, or the ability to build tunnels, shunting sensors. You can see we also have our money just in the top here. We can spend this to build links to different stations. So our railways, or we can purchase different types of signals. And you can see here that our first train has just finished its trial. So from here, we can accept it. And by accepting it, it will be added onto the schedule, which will run every hour. So we're going to accept that. And so in an hour's time, we will receive that same train to come and do the exact same track or route again. And so that's the, the basic concept of this. We now have eight green research points, which we can use to upgrade our network. Now, if we just run it for a few seconds more, you'll notice that we get a, a little alert when the trains come. What we can do with these is invest in some signals and also a way to get the trains to, here you go, automatically come to the station. So we're going to do that first by auto accepting the trains, which we can do by pressing E on this one. And then the other thing that I want to upgrade or unlock is the automatic routing. So now when we go back to this, this train should, there we go, automatically route to the station. This is going to be really helpful in allowing us to automate this later on. Same with things like automatically reversing the carriages after they've arrived at a stop like this one in Dartford. The other thing is we can now buy these signals. Now, auto signals allow us to path from one station to another. So from here, we can now click and it will head to this station. That may not seem like much of an upgrade for the time being, but as we expand to more stations, which I plan to, we'll head to uh, Barnhurst next, it will become very useful. Next, we're going to purchase a train platform at Barnhurst. Now we're going to connect that with the rail along here. Then we can purchase other platforms at Dartford so that trains going in different directions don't need to cross and have the risk of a collision. 
because if your trains collide, it's automatically game over. Okay, so we've managed to get a little bit further on. You can see we've got a, a much busier schedule now. We have this particular train, which is going to Slade Green and then returning. And I've unlocked all of the Dartford platforms. So we have the trains heading in and you're going to see this reverse straight away and head back along here. We're also using these perpetual circuits, which means that this will always be green so this particular block providing there's nothing going into the station same with this uh, this is really beneficial when you're having longer lines because it keeps the flow of your 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 rails okay so we've just unlocked plumstead and put a line across to it and we've now added the dispatcher's office there and you can see we've already got a red contract so that's the next thing that we need to do and here we oh wow this <laughs> this has a lot <laughs> a lot of stations to go through the most complicated one i've come across yet so we can have a if we make sure it comes in on station one that's green it's just passing and then we have it go to needs to go via station one at Dartford just passing Slade Green on station one again just passing which is fine and then it will wait at Plumstead for a good half an hour by the looks of it before heading back to Stone Crossing so we'll accept that and get some red research points and here's our freight train arriving. So we're going to send that to platform one, then up through Slade Green and to Plumstead. Okay, it's going to wait there. It's already turned around. I really need to automate this. So we're just going to continue on now and try and get a load of green research points and red research points so we can lock the next sensors and signals to play about with. Okay, it's time to spend some points. We've just unlocked the routing queue. We're going to do the departure sensor now because we have plenty of research points available and also the arrival census. We do need to start focusing on this, uh, unlocking tier two. Um, we could go with shunting commands. Yeah, let's unlock this and I'll have a look at that in a moment. But first, let's play around with these new sensors. So let's have a go with these departure sensors. We can place these on the station and any train that comes through here will then route to this line, but it needs to add a station. So we know that any trains that arrive here currently go to Stone Crossing. So fingers crossed this is correct. But by doing that, any train that now goes into one of these two platforms should automatically route out. Let's have a look. See if I've done it correct. I might not have. There we go. Perfect. Oh, that saves us extra clicking. It's all about automation. I love it. The next sensor that we can look at is the arrival one. So by placing this behind a automated signal that's heading into a station, we can connect these, I think. I remember doing this. Connect it to the auto signal and then we select the station and hopefully, <laughs> if all goes well, it should route the next train so that they're going in the right direction. So this one's going to Dartford 2. Please work. There we go. We have automated this system. Fantastic. So, so I need to now do this for all of these stations and then I'm going to have a look at shunting. I've been trying to fulfill the tier two uh, cycle requirements for the red research, which is eight red research contracts done in a single cycle, which is one hour. Except I didn't realize this, and so it's taken me ages to do. The good news is we have almost £700,000, and my target for today is to make a million. But now that I know what I'm doing, I'm hoping that we complete the red contracts of this cycle so that we can play around with shunting. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. 
Wait, no! I was a minute late! I can't believe that! Oh. Okay, I'm going to continue doing this. We will do it next. We did it! We did it just in time with six minutes to go, which means we've now unlocked all of these. So shunting sensors, stabling a sensor, tunnels, urban transit contacts, all of these uh, contracts, sorry. Um, and advanced arrival sensors. So we're going to be able to do some more interesting things now and really expand our network because we're, we've just got started over here and I need to expand it round to, to this area in order to, to utilize it. As you can see, things have progressed a little bit. We've expanded on our network. We've also spent 700,000 credits or pounds building this. Um, as a, a tier two railway. So we're going to have to earn a lot more money to get us back up to towards a million. But we have started playing around with shunting. So this is our first train that's going to be shunted over here. Uh, I think that's the right terminology. And um, basically what this means is that this particular train has two different legs of journey that it needs to do and so the first leg will take it to Dartford um, platform 4 and then after that it needs to go to a siding where it can wait for its second journey so from here we've used these shunting signals to send the train to a shunting yard or siding I guess is the right terminology correct me if i'm wrong please because i'm not great on train terminology but the the train will be sent to this area that we've built and we're using shunting signals so that we the train knows where it needs to go and so once it arrives in fact we can play this now we can toggle the shunting mode which is down at the bottom bar here so now that it's arrived in at Dartford, Dartford Platform 4, we can now toggle the shunting mode. Now this is the manual setup, we have to do this for each of the trains. However, we can automate it and I'm hoping to do that later on. So from here, we're going to send this train to the shunting yard by clicking this go to shunting group or alternatively we can just click on go to signal. And from here, it will start a shunting queue. It's like a command queue for our train. And so once it arrives, we want it to reverse back along this track. So we need to click reverse. So it's going to the siding, then reversing. And then we're going to reuse the train. And I've set it so that it's one minute before it needs to arrive, it will head off to the next platform, which is Dartford platform one. So from here, we will send the train to this platform and that should work and it will go back on its merry way back to Chelsfield. Let's play and see if it does as is told. Yes, fantastic. So now it's going to wait until 6.22 to head down to here, which it does. Oh, fantastic. So we have just unlocked the shunting sensor and the stabling sensor, and we're going to now hopefully work out how we can get the train automated for the, the stabling here. You can see this one's heading there now. We're going to try this with the stabling sensor. So hopefully this will work. So if we have a place here and then can set the commands hopefully this works go to here reverse reuse and then head to hit let's see if that works okay here it is the moment of truth and it's going to stable itself yes yes oh oh that is a huge relief Fantastic. So we know, now know how to automate these uh, sta stabling, not sidings. Now I just need to expand on the rest of our network.
And then I need to just clean all this up because it, it's a mess. Um, I wonder if there's a way to cancel all the contracts and then take them up again. So these are all the contracts that we have live at the moment. So it is possible. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Delete them all and then we're going to rebuild the network and hopefully it'll work perfectly. So the first thing that I think we need to do is sort out the track. I've got some lines that are going uh, right-handed drive and others that are left-handed. So we really need to sort that out. And I'm just going to go around the whole track, deleting all of these signals, and then we're going to redo it. Okay, so I'm hoping now, with this all running, that we will be able to get all 25 in the single current cycle. You can see we, we've already passed five. We've got another 21 trains remaining. So if all goes to plan, we will unlock tier three, which will mean we have unlocked we have routing sensors available as well as unlimited stations. I have more than enough green points to get them all in one fell sweep as well uh, because I've, I've just been letting this run while I've been fixing my circuits or networks. But all of this is now running pretty smoothly. I've also upgraded pretty much the whole track with these tier... I want to say tier three tracks, the 120 kilometer tracks, which means my trains keep bleeping at me because they keep stopping at a signal <laughs> while they're waiting for other ones to other trains to go through. As you can hear now. But thankfully, the vast majority of trains are running on time, which is fantastic. Oh wait, did we do it? No wait, we're, we're just off still. Wait, we have done it. We've done it. We've unlocked tier three. Fantastic. So now we can unlock all of these. Okay, well now we have 394,000. We want a million. We want to make a million pounds. So we're going to expand this network probably with starting from London, Victoria and working our way in so that we have several sections running at once and so not all connected to this main track goodness me who knew running a train network was so expensive i can't afford this we've uh, spent all our money just on this one uh, section of rail alone now it's time for the shunting yard here I'm going to place one of the signals here i hope i'm doing this right but there's only one way to find out uh, and then from here we're going to run this yeah, I think down into here. And this should, in my mind at least, work quite well as a dedicated shunting yard area. I think we'll start off with just these two shunting, um, well, s siding, stablings for the time being. And then we're going to need shunting tracks the routing signal is working beautifully and why do you not want to shunt okay this one's gonna go in i think the problem was i set it to the wrong sensor i placed it on this one originally but the stabling rule needs to be on the one that it's going into so it would be this one and so this should there we go. That is exactly what I wanted to happen. Fantastic. So we now have working stabling on this side of the track. And I'm now working on doubling up this track before working on the various other sections. We're starting to make some money and I've just been working on a circuit over here between London Charing Cross and City Thames Link. Uh, I do need to upgrade this so that we can speed up the tracks because at the moment I think it's just the second tier the 80 kilometer speed limit one so i'd like to increase the speed of that and then hopefully we'll be making close to a million wow yeah let's finish this off this is really starting to come alive we've almost made 500,000, and you can see we've got multiple um 
trains using the sidings here. We've had up to three. I'm ready to expand it should we need to. And there's a potential for us to expand in this direction if we need to as well. I don't know what's happened, but everything has just ground to a halt. Oh no. Um, oh my goodness me. What? <laughs> I was just building the shunting yard. Um, one small slip up. I don't know. I haven't changed anything. So I think one train may have accidentally gone down the wrong line or something's held something up. Oh, I've just loaded a previous save and it's just started to form by the looks of it. I think this is the issue here and hopefully that will fix things. The other thing is that this departure sensor and I think this is because I've upgraded the lines for some reason it even though the the signal doesn't change it sometimes needs a resetting so hopefully everything will start running now and we can get back to normal yay there we go I need to expand on this area I need to improve on that and then we should be good uh, to work on the shunting area as well. I've fixed the Grove Park. So any trains that are making a return journey now side essentially in the third platform and we've now got a, a two-way system. The next thing that I want to do is sort out this so that we have room for more sidings should we need to. And I'm going to do that really simply. We're just going to pull this around. there and then we can just run this up into the side this will give us plenty of room should we wish to expand London Victoria to be the hub that it is today fantastic it looks like that's working it's just waiting for this to clear this signal yeah might need to add more signals I think maybe along here but that is working fantastic and we're now only a hundred thousand off I actually really like the shunting mechanics there's something very satisfactory about seeing the the trains go to the sidings and queue up um, oh goodness me we're just about oh so close and then we had to choose. we had to pay <laughs> oh but guys, we have just hit one million pounds running London's uh, busiest underground and overground railways. I have to say, we are an expert, kind of. We're, we're probably about to have another problem. <laughs> Hopefully not, but we are going to leave it there. I do want to say a huge thank you to Railroot for sponsoring this video. Guys, check out the game. The link is in the description and the pinned comment below. But guys, thank you so much for watching and thank you as always to our amazing supporters on Patreon, most notably our Solar Clips Patreon Fireflesh, as well as our Lunas, the Calamity, Ben and Star, and our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Jenny. Until next time, as always, ciao for now.